Dude, I almost hit you with the cutoff bag so hard, I didn't want to do it. Freaking best backfield in the NFL, are you stupid? Are you kidding me? Yes! Have you seen that backfield? No, I'm not kidding you. Who's got a better backfield? There's your code open right here. <laughs> who's, who's got a better backfield? The Saints! Welcome to Saints on Tap, poured by Bud Light, the official beer of the NFL. I'm Joe Simeone, and John Wiener. They call me Drew Breezy. I'm back, I'm back. What a terrible variation. They call variation. me Drew Breezy. Can I just cut I'm him off back. for that? I'm back, I'm back. Please don't yet. We had the cut off bag last week. Don't go for it yet, man. It's early in the show. They got to see my pretty face first. Saints on Tap. Uh, poured by Bud Light. We're excited to have all Houdat Nation with us. And we got Arizona this week coming into the Dome, but some big yeah. news first. Yeah, big news. I, I think it's hard, near impossible to start the show without talking about first Drew Brees. Cheers. Possibly coming back. <laughs> Drew Brees. <laughs> Our favorite thing. Mm. All right. I, I, I think this is a really interesting talking point mm -hmm. because uh, most people didn't expect him to be back until after the bye. So the fact he's coming back already... To me, almost feels a little bit rushed. What do you what, what do you think about this? Um, it's a complicated one, and like with the Saints at six and one and Teddy Bridgewater, like who thought we'd be here? Right. Where it's like Drew stay <laughs> on the sideline. I think Joe, it's a question of of should he play versus will he play? Right. And so the will he play, it's like what's the news? So far, he practiced today, limited in practice, mm -hmm. but he, he sounds like he's ready. Uh, it's just a matter of if he feels like himself in practice, as he said, as he put it. And as long as he does, he says he's going to talk to Sean Payton, and we'll go from there. We're mm -hmm. not sure yet, but it's an interesting development. I, I think you have to have faith in Drew Brees that when he says, I'm ready, he's not lying. He is actually ready, and he'll be ready to go 100%. This reminds me of, you know, Any Given Sunday, the movie? Yeah. And Cap Rooney, like the old veteran, the winner, like the star, loses his job, and everybody's like, we can't wait to get Cap back. We can't wait. And all of a sudden, Willie, steaming, beaming, comes in and starts cutting it up. And then they cut to Cap Rooney, and he's, like, in the weight room, like, right. going yeah, overdrive. Yeah. And she's like, yo, slow down, Hercules. And he's like, the kid's breathing down my neck. I don't know if there's any bit of, of that with Drew Brees. Like, he's afraid to lose his job to Teddy Bridgewater. But I do think Drew, like, wants to get back on the field as soon as possible, like, no yeah. matter what. I don't know if it's ego, you know what I mean? No, definitely. There can be <laughs> some, uh, some jealousy almost there with how much love. Is this a beer show, or are like, we drinking <laughs> beer, or are we just, like, you know, just kind of, like, talking Saints like every other how about a little bit of both, man? boring show? I'm with it. Anyways, Drew Brees... I think there is a little bit of jealousy there. He's uh, not in danger of Teddy Bridgewater taking his spot, but come on. I mean, it, when you see how much love that the fans are giving Teddy Bridgewater out there in Chicago, mm -hmm. chanting, Teddy, 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 <laughs> Teddy. Oh, we stopped. Okay, cool. I yeah. think there's a little bit of jealousy, at least. And an ego <laughs> plays into that. I don't know. This is a really tough one. I, I mean, let, let, let's call first things first. I think most people... Us, yep. I think Saints fans, yep. I think everybody want Drew Brees to not rush back. You're six and one, you're yep. way ahead of the game, and you've got the bye week next week. So I think most people look at this and say, should he play? I think the answer is no. And especially, you know, you talk about the Cardinals are one of the top five in the league in sacks. Mm -hmm. Why would you rush him back now, take yeah. the bye week, and come back against an yeah. Arizona defense that's absolute, I mean, uh, uh, Atlanta defense sure. that's just. Terrible. The Falcons defense is so bad. <laughs> Let's cheers to the Falcons defense being terrible. Um, I hate we didn't do the bird drinking game. Man. We would have been out. So we got a good one coming for you. <clears throat> but um, you know, w one thing on the on the on Arizona and their sack total, they got twenty three in the league right yep. now, which is like third or fourth. They had a third of that last week alone against yeah, the sure. poorest Giants offensive line, and like Daniel Jones, who's Seeing ghosts, yeah. as Matt, Dar as uh, Dar as Sam Darnold said. <laughs> um, so, like, I'm, I wouldn't be so worried about that. Like we talked about with sure. Aaron Donald, uh, the Saints' offensive line is probably the best in football, no doubt. Like, let's give them credit for what they did against the Bears last week. That was a dominant performance by the offensive line. Neutralize Khalil Mack. I think that, like Chandler Jones, you get it in the NFL every yeah. week. You're going to get a dominant edge rusher. Chandler Jones had four sacks last week. I'm not so worried about like Breeze and the injury thing. It's it's just, I think at this point you just you don't need to rush back. You know what I mean? Sure. And, and so I, I think should he play? I think most people agree. Nah, you'd rather him wait, and and there's no need to rush him back. But the will he play? Like 
if Drew says he's ready to go and he says, I want to play, whether you're Teddy Bridgewater or Sean Payton or Mickey Loomis, how can you say no? Yeah, there's no doubt. If he says he's ready, he feels 100%. I don't think there's any doubt. Put him out there. Is it selfishness from Breeze to say, I want to play, I'm the starting quarterback, even though it may not be the best thing for the franchise? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I, I think if he really, if he honestly believes that he's 100%, if that's truthful from him, you can't question it. It's Drew Brees. It's Drew Brees! Yeah, I know. Well, I think the Saints are in good position either way, but I don't know, man. I, I, I wish, and I think most people wish, that maybe Brees would, because you take this week off, you get a whole nother week. Sure. And and that leads to the question, like, are you worried about the Cardinals? You know what I mean? Yeah. Is it a game that you, you feel like, hey, we, we need Brees here? The Saints are ahead of schedule, but but talk to me about this Arizona team, man. They're 3-3-1. Three, three and one. They've won three in a row. The Cardinals don't scare me. Um, they're not a team that I'm really afraid of, but they really, really intrigue me. I, I think that they're a very interesting team With when you look at the playmakers that they have on offense, you know, mm. from the veteran in Larry Fitzgerald all the way to the exciting and, and new... And I'll cheers to Fitzgerald, yeah, man. Absolutely. There's, not, a a, there's not sort of a better player to get behind in the league. Oh, by the way, we were told we need to... Make sure Bud Light, official beer of the NFL, yep. and Saints on tap. Big Joe, we got it right there for you. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, go ahead with the Cardinals and Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah, and then to the exciting playmakers, new guys like Kyler Murray, Chase Edmonds, and uh, and David Johnson, of course. I think, honestly, when you talk about this team, I, I think they have the most dangerous backfield in the NFL, and it, it might be a little bold to say, but when you talk about, it's not just about the running backs. David Johnson. We're threatening the cutoff David bag Johnson over here. Uh -huh. and Chase Edmonds can both run yeah. and run like hell, but they also can both catch. They're both wide receivers, and on top of that, Kyler Murray, not only can he throw the ball, mm -hmm. this man's dynamic as a yeah. running back as well, so you got three running backs yeah. uh, that you need to watch out for. About 400 yards. I, I, most dynamic backfield. Like, the Saints backfield is pretty damn good. I was almost, I'm going to save the cutoff bag. Like, we did you dirty last week, although it was right. But, you know, I, I, I just... I will say this about Arizona. They sure. scare me more than Jacksonville did. Yeah. Even on the road, they scare me more than a Bears team with a backup starting who happened to be the number two pick and Mitch Trubisky. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I and, and it's just, I guess what scares me a little bit is like, at some point you're due for a loss in the NFL, right? Now, the Saints are 17 and three at home in their last 20 games. Yeah. But I, I just you, you think that like they can't go on this uh, they can't go on forever like this. But what's interesting, they're nine and a half point favorites this week. Yeah. But then the last two weeks they were dogs. We were like, no, 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 wrong team favored, right, right. and like they were. So I just this is a bit of an if it wasn't at home, I guess I'd be a little more worried. But like, yeah, I think the Cardinals. I don't know if they scare you, but they scare me more than the Bears and the Jaguars did. Well, here's my last thought on it. I I, I think. Kyler Murray, yes, he's putting things together, string together three wins. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, this is a rookie quarterback. And when you have somebody like Sean Payton on the other side yeah. and a defense yeah. like the Saints have they're right eating, now. man. Chomp, 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 chomp. You talk about seeing ghosts. I yeah. think Kyler Murray is going to be seeing some this weekend. We got to wrap it up. Houdini Hanks tell me back there, but I'll say one thing against Arizona. They won their last three games. Yep. And the combined record, Giants, uh, Bengals, Bucks is like 3-18. and 18. But those three losses came because Arizona was better than they were. So you uh, can yeah. fall into that trap in the NFL sure. and say, look at their combined records. But it's because the team on the other side was better. If the Cardinals stunk, then the Giants would have a better record. You know what I mean? And and, and Tampa, you know what I mean? And yeah. the Bengals, I mean, the Bengals can't beat Southern Miss right now. <laughs> but like, yeah, and so I just, I, I, I think Arizona, like I'm interested in this game and we'll go ahead and, and, and finish up the beer and finish the segment on Saints on Tap. Yeah, well, I'm excited for the game and we'll hit a sip or chug right after this and play a little game of our own. Bud Light, drink it. Saints on Tap, poured by Bud Light, the official beer of the NFL. We appreciate y'all joining us. We're hoping you're pouring up, pulling up, and uh, joining us for the best Saints pregame. And, and you know, one thing I, I want to remind people is that the scientific study, Josh the Juice talked about scientific study that I talk more than you do. I mean, like, we know that already. <laughs> That's what the cutoff bag was invented for. Saints fans on game day consume more beer than any other franchise in the league by a long shot. And that's the whole point, Who Dat Nation. We're glad you're <laughs> with us. And we've got, like, our favorite game coming up, right? Sipper Chuck. Yeah, but before we get into that game, we really fill up before I hit you. Okay, from it's coming, before, man. Yeah. It's coming. Do you know where Chase Edmonds Oh, no! It's Pat. <laughs> I don't even know who Chase Edmonds is, man. <laughs> like, he ran for a billion yards last week against New York. No, I don't know. You got to tell me, because the drinking game, like, if I guess it, then you got to say, I got no fucking See, clear. I know, because it's where my where Big Joe went. Okay. Fordham. A Fordham Flash? 
Chase yep. Edmonds? Oh, I might have to drink to that, but shout out Fordham <laughs> flat like Frankie Frisch back in the day, man. Fordham? Yep. Wait, 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 I got some more for you. You want to verify that us? Mm. For us? Did he play under Joe Moorhead, who was the head coach at Fordham? No, and I don't like, believe so. It, it must have been Moorhead's success, like Chase Edmonds, because <laughs> that sure can't coach in Starkville. Sipper Chug, what do we got? All right, Sipper Chug, first up, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson played a phenomenal game last week. Do you think he will play for the rest of the season? Can we Sipper Chug on my tie? Like, can we? That is actually a glorious tie. Yeah, like I told you about the uh, tie. You were like, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm like, nah, wait till it's you see. It's a good tie. Uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, Sipper Chug that he's a starter the rest of the season? Yes. I'm going to chug. I'm going to chug on it all the way. I think I'm going to join you on that, so I'll let you explain while I end up chugging. Look at you go. <laughs> I need to save something. We're going to have to get to the extra pitcher, but hey, that's what it's all about on Saints on Tap. You know, when we were down at Saints Minicap and we talked about Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, Yep. what did we say about him? Physical. Yeah. SEC physical football player. He showed all of that yeah. in his first start. Now, he has showed it on special teams. And even against the, you know, two weeks ago when, when he made a couple of big stops. Absolutely. Um, I think that, first of all, P.J. Williams ain't exactly Deion Sanders or Ronnie Lott. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, you're not asking him to step in and, like, fill in for even, like, a Darren Sharper. Right. You know what I mean? Back in the day. So, I, I think that, um, yeah, I think it's it, it's tailor-made for him. He, he brings such a thump and he brings mm -hmm. such an attitude. And that's what sticks out to me about this Saints team. They have such an attitude that starts with their coach. Right. That is dictated by Sean Payton and the swagger and the toughness. Um, but, yeah, I think Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, like, I think it was just a matter of time for him to get his opportunity. Seven tackles last week, tackle for loss. I don't know if he's the real deal, but I think he, you'd rather have him in the lineup than P.J. Williams. I, I honestly do believe he's the real deal, and mm -hmm. I was on this kid during the draft, you as are. you know. Uh, I, I, he's a Swiss Army knife, and I knew it was only a matter of time, like you said, until he found his fit on the team because he's just so versatile and so useful in so many different ways that – I mean, he had to find an area to succeed in, and of course, as soon as P.J. Williams' suspension came yeah. in, I said to you immediately, I was like, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, it's his time. It's his time to shine. I mean, I, I thought Chauncey Gardner-Johnson made more plays in one game than P.J. Williams made all season. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, that was a tailor-made game for him, right? Yeah. So it depends on who you're playing, right? Because he's more of a, it feels like an in-the-box safety guy, sure. you know? And so the Bears, because Trubisky can't throw the ball downfield, and they don't really have any like receivers that scare you, that was an in-the-box kind of game. I know the Bears didn't run it a lot. I ran it seven times. Like, I what? think your boy Matt, yeah. your boy Matt, Matt Nagy. Nagy, the offensive genius. But but you know I just uh, yeah I'm 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 all in on Chauncey Gardner Johnson. What's next? All right, next up we got Cliff Kingsbury. How do you feel about him? This is a tough one for me. I'm gonna sip on Cliff Kingsbury. I've thought about this a lot, and let me sip. Okay. I just think it's a wait and see approach. I, I'm, I, I think that the guy didn't have a lot of success I don't even know in if college. I have to talk on this one. I don't care what you did in college. I, I just think that, like, without Sean McVay's success in LA, uh -huh. Cliff Kingsbury doesn't have the Arizona job. But just because you fit a mold of that coach, I'm not gonna go all in. Like, can he? Have, will he have a dynamic offense? Okay, were you gonna? We're talking about like Cliff Kingsbury as a long time the head coach of the Cardinals and making it work. I'm going to sip, man. Like, I don't have anything, uh, you know? Cliff is supposed to be one of those offensive guys, uh -huh. supposed to be an offensive genius, and so far the offense has looked really good for Arizona. And at the same time, you got to talk about you have a rookie quarterback back there as lo along with a rookie coach. Yeah. This yeah. isn't like a rookie coach coming in and having someone experience. Which is a good thing for him, I no, think. No, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think it helps his offense, but... I think it's just too early to tell. It's too early to know what you have there. You have to see what Kyler Murray is. You have to see what the offensive scheme is. And it's just eight weeks in. It's way too early to you, judge either way. You know what's interesting with such trash coaches around the league, like Gase in, in New York, you know what I mean? And Shermer. Point, though. Like Kingsbury, like I'll bet on him more than a lot of guys because he's There's got Kyler Murray that, right? that, uh, that, that offense fits. All right, uh -huh. you ready for this? We're going to run it back. Cliff Kingsbury, who he played for. Oh, man. It's right on the tip. This is a good one. I don't know it. I don't know it. Texas Tech. He played quarterback at I the school that he coached on. So mm. he was one of the first in a long line of those Texas Tech quarterbacks that included Pat Mahomes, that included Baker Mayfield. Yeah, go ahead. Rack it up. That was a good one. I like that one. But, yeah, look, Cliff Kingsbury, like, I kind of want him to succeed, you know? Like, yeah. I think it would be better for the NFL if him and Kyler Murray work. 
No, I'm, I'm right there with you. Let's hit this last one really quick. So, uh, Saints last special, ones. Saints special teams. I'll cue it up for you first. All right. I'm going to chug on the Saints special yeah. teams. Um, hold on. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Take it all down. Take it all down. Yeah. Saints special teams has been great besides last week. Uh-huh. You gave up a kick return for a touchdown. Last week was pretty Lush bad. missed a field goal, and the, the onside kick stuff at the end was just a debauchery. But at the same time, Thomas Morstead is second in the NFL for punts down in the, inside the 20, which is an incredible feat and helps out your team so mm-hmm. much in field position. Will Lutz, besides having a couple mistakes, has had some phenomenal games. Like, look at the Texans game. He mm-hmm. won the game. Mm-hmm. And on top of that... While Deontay Harris has some miscues, having that X factor, I think, is extremely underrated, especially when you get to the playoffs. Yeah. Having somebody who can just return the ball at any time for a touchdown, like yeah. Deontay Harris has the ability to do, is immense for a team. Yeah. I'm going to chug on this one as well. There you go. Perfect timing on that. I think Harris puts <laughs> it over the top, because I'll say this. Yep. I'm worried about Will Lutz a little bit. You can only do that for so long. I mean, sure. he hasn't missed a kick, it feels like, in years. And mm-hmm. once you miss one, it kind of gets in your head a little bit. And I talk Total about that with game. kickers all the time. Morstead is great. Um, the special team's coverage has been suspect. Cordero Patterson took one back last week and yeah. gave up an onside kick. Uh, I think Morstead, obviously. Morstead wasn't even great last week. But I think Harris, his ability, Joe, not the bus one, but I love how he gets up the field. And, like, you're getting 10, 11 yep. yards on a punt return, and that can be a game changer. I think the Saints special teams it has been a lot of the heart of their 6-1 and one start, and I think you can count on it with Morstead and Lutz in the punt return. You're going to have to tackle. You're going to have to recover an onside kick, but we're chugging in the Saints special teams. Absolutely. We'll, we'll be right back with our spike performers for this matchup. I'm back. <laughs> Oh, ready, ready for the crack? Yeah, let's oh. crack it up. Bon and oh, Viv, yeah. the official Spike Seltzer of the NFL. It's time for our Bon and Viv Spike performers. Yeah, uh, you want me to start it off? Can I just, I went to the dentist today. What is this relevant? <laughs> well, because, like, is there anything worse than going, like, to the dentist? Like, when you go to, uh-huh. if, 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 like, I'm going, uh, if there's a hell, like, there's someone with, like, that little picky. Yeah, can we? Picky, I'm scrapey so thing. Oh, no! I'm done. No! I got what, man? It's terrible. What? T- <laughs> I don't even have anything for that. Just You need to be cut off. I'm going to get into my spec performer, which is Kyler Murray. And Kyler Murray, listen, this guy is so dynamic. New guy. You, know, you look fantastic with that on. Look at that. Of that course I do. Show. I always look fantastic. You should just wear that for the whole show. It's an improved look. <laughs> All right, listen. Kyler Murray, he is... Absolutely a dynamic player, and he's starting to figure it out. The first three weeks, he kind of looked a little bit shaky. The last three weeks, he threw for over 300 yards in his last start. I this- hate you. <laughs> <laughs> is- Wait, I need to drink some of this. Yeah, you got to drink. I can't talk with this on, but... That's the point. The matchup between the defensive line and the secondary and being able to contain Kyler Murray, somebody with that running ability and also with the arm strength that he has, he's super unique, somebody who I haven't really seen in a while. (laughs) I really, really enjoy watching him. He intrigues me a lot, and I think it's going to be interesting to see how the Saints handle him. I would ask for your take on it, but... (laughs) (laughs) This is supposed to be off. It's not supposed to stay on forever. Yeah, no, I'm with it, and good use on the cutoff bag. Um... I, uh, Dennis sucks, but, um, you know, I'm with you on Kyler Murray. Like, he's a dynamic player. Um, I, I look at Patrick Peterson came back last week. Yeah. Um, and so my spike performer. Mmm, Bon and Viv Cranberry's good. I like that. Great Let's fruit. cheers to that. Bon, bon and Viv, Viv, baby. Official spike seltzer of the NFL. Mm. Mm. Patrick Peterson changes this team. Sure. Patrick Peterson came back last week, and there's a reason why they got eight sacks, <clears> because... No one's open downfield. Covered sacks. Man. Patrick Peterson's one of the best corners still in the NFL. One of the best players I've ever seen in SEC football. This guy is phenomenal. It was his first game back last week, and, I mean, a bunch of tackles. I mean, he made an absolute difference, had to sack himself. Yeah, but do you know what the guy's handle is who he has to cover? Can't guard Mike. 
And and that's what's interesting to me because the spike the spike performer, the big sure. matchup in this game is Michael Thomas and Patrick Peterson. Because if there's a guy in the league, like who's the last guy Thomas faced? Like there's a guy in the league that can take Michael Thomas as good as he is, MVP candidate, leading the NFL in in, in receiving yards. Like I was DFW, I was dead yeah. can wrong on Michael Thomas saying that he wouldn't be the same guy without Jabris. He's been even more valuable. Yep. If there's one guy who can take him out in the league. It's Patrick Peterson. And so then you get into the question for the Saints with no Camara, with no number two receiver. And like we talked through it, we didn't get to it. What's right. the Saints roster hole? What's going to keep them from winning the championship? It's what no kept doubt. them last year. They didn't have anybody to throw to when Michael Thomas was shut down. So the big question is what's changed? Yeah, no, not a lot. So that's <laughs> your worry is that if Patrick Peterson comes in and takes Michael Thomas out of the ball game and Camara's not playing, I mean, Ted Ginn, bless his heart. Like, I mean, I mean, they they've got like 35 targets and he's got like 12 catches. You know what I mean? Like, I, I so so that is the key to me. For one, just watching that matchup, Michael Thomas and Patrick Peterson. But also, if Peterson wins it, what do the Saints do? Yeah, it's a really interesting question because it is the biggest hole, no doubt. And I gotta say, man, it, it's almost sad. It almost hurt my heart watching the game last week uh -huh. because like people were ripping on Teddy Bridge. Oh, he doesn't throw the deep ball. He throws four beautiful balls at Teddy Bridgewater. I think he, I mean, uh, to uh, Ted Ginn, and I think uh, he dropped three of them. Uh, it was yeah. like, oh! I mean, yeah. Let me let, let's say this about Ted Ginn. Like that's been his his yeah. mo his whole sure, career, no doubt. But also, Ted Ginn has been for any Saint fan watching this game. Sure, for any Saint fan, he's been more productive and a better player for the Saints than you ever could imagine. Certainly yep. last year, two years ago, Exceeded drops are always an issue. He doesn't always like make that big catch. And if he's your number two receiver, you got a lot of problems. But I like to give Ted Ginn some credit because he's a better wide receiver than the narrative suggests. No doubt. Well, we'll see. I mean, Kyler Murray is a fantastic player, so mm -hmm. that's a great matchup to watch at defensive line, watching Cam Jordan and Marcus Davenport chase him around the field in yeah. circles as he does pirouettes yeah. and tries to figure out a way to throw. But on the other side, of course, Michael Thomas and... And uh, Patrick Peterson. Patrick Peterson. Jo Thank you. Jordan's playing such terrific football yeah. right so. now. And, and, and we'll you know, Peterson is the definition of like what one corner can do, that Dion effect, when you take away a whole can side I cut of the him field. Off twice in no, this you can't cut me off. Like, what? I mean, Patrick Peterson's like terrific. No, you're I mean, right. You are. But yeah, yes, I, already, I already got cut off. Like, <laughs> I, I guess I should stop. But like, here's to the uh, Bon and Viv, the official Spike Seltzer of the NFL. Well, and uh, our some, last call. So, some big, uh, some big matchups this weekend. Make sure you're checking out our Bon and Viv Spike the Score contest. Tell us how many of the Saint points the Saints are going to score, which is going to be like a billion, and uh, you can win some great swag from Bon and Viv. We got one more last call, man. We got to make it happen. We got to tap one more on. Let's do it up. Take on tap. All right, the lights are on. It's time for last call. And I'm getting my last beer. Oh, no, you. one more bartender. <laughs> yeah, bartender. last call. <laughs> I hope this doesn't fizz up. So, yeah, no, you're we got to right. tack on one more for the road. You know what I mean? But always drink and uh, drive responsibly. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh, man. It's a real thing. Last call, go ahead. Last call. So my last call is that the Saints, despite the record right now and how well they've been playing with Teddy Bridgewater, with Drew Brees stepping back in, this is not going to be a coast to the divisional title. The Panthers look like a really formidable team, and their defensive line is first right now in the NFL for sacks. They're sitting at 4-2. and two. I think, you know, talk about Cam Newton going down. I think they found the real deal. I don't think that the Saints are going to coast. This is going to have to be a tough-fought divisional title, and I'm excited to see how the rest of the season shapes out. I think you're right, man. I think it's shaping up early in the season. Everybody wanted New Orleans to just run away with this. Like, I mean, Ron Rivera, a.k.a. Riverboat Ron, like, he doesn't always, I don't think he stacks up in, like, mm -hmm. the top echelon sure. of coaches. I mean, I'm not putting up there with Matt Nagy or anything, but you know what I mean. I think Ron Rivera, like, you know what they're going to bring. They're going to bring the wood. They're not fun to play against. And I right. think when they have a good team, I'm with you, man. I, I, I um, As much as I hate to say it, I think they're going to have to fight against Carolina a little bit. Yeah, it almost feels like you know you get Drew Brees back. It felt like originally, oh, that'll be when they start winning a bunch. Of, well, you won five in a row now. Eventually, right? You gotta lose some. So, and the game that the Saints are playing right now is Carolina's ball game. Sure, like Carolina usually loses to the Saints because Brees and the offense just gives you more to work with. Like yeah. Cam Newton, who I love, and I'm on record with that. But 
the way the Saints are playing right now, the Carolina is, is built for that kind of football. Yeah, well, we'll see how the, the race shapes out. And what's your last call? I know you're excited. Well, first of all, let's mention the fact that the Atlanta Falcons are 1-6. Okay, like uh, that should be mentioned like every, every time. Show, yeah. I mean, they, they are they continue to abysmal, lose. they're terrible, they're atrocious, they're awful. I actually, so I was actually watching, just real quick, I was watching some Kyler Murray tape, obviously, and when they played the Falcon. I don't think I've seen a worse defense. It's no, they're, it's I told incredible. you, man, they're pillow muffin soft, like, and they are <laughs> always muffin soft. Um, What's your last call? When I think about Arizona, mm-hmm. I, I go back to the 09 season when they okay. won the Super Bowl. And um, Reggie Bush what was such a uh, uh, an interesting player for the Saints and, and such a, a godsend in so many ways in 06. You brought Sean Payton in. Right. You brought Drew, Br- Drew Brees in. But Reggie Bush changed the franchise. Reggie Bush gave New Orleans reason to believe and reason to get excited and was a hell of a player. And yeah. his crowning achievement was the Arizona Cardinals game in the playoffs in 2009. He broke a huge run for a touchdown, 60, 70 yards, and then took a punt return and literally broke Arizona's back. Well, he didn't literally do it. That'd be tough to break like 54 backs and like a bird. But you know what I mean? Reggie Bush, he had such a monster game against Arizona. I remember every moment of it. And Bush was great as a rookie, but, and, you know, it kind of whatever. And 09 was sort of his swan song. But the Arizona game, any Saints fan who remembers that, that was Reggie Bush's crowning moment. It was a huge win for the Saints to beat a Kurt Warner team with Fitzgerald and Bolden and Arizona. And when I think about Arizona and, and, you know, the Saints were so quick to hearken back to to 09, what a magical run it was. And and that, um, the the Cardinals game was such a big win and it was was Reggie Bush's greatest moment as a Saint and just a great moment in Saints history, the Cardinals win in the playoffs. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt about it. It was a fantastic game. Yeah. Just the, the... (laughs) <laughs> what do you want to call it? The air that like Reggie Bush just well, took out of the stadium. He, he you know, brought in. he had that big playability, and he was never able to be a down in, down out, effective guy. Although even that gets overplayed, he was a terrific player for the Saints his whole career. But you I feel like about, he was almost a little early for you, his style. A, a little bit. You talk right? about a big playability, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you saw those big plays. It absolutely was the defining moment of that of that first game in the playoffs Absolutely. for the Saints in 2009. And, you, of course, you think about the Kurt Warner hit, and Greg Williams was just <laughs> pounding everybody's head. But it was, it, was, it was Reggie Bush. And when I think about the Cardinals coming into the Superdome, I can't help but think about that, that great moment in 09 and the possibility that we could be gearing up for that again. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited to see how this game mm-hmm. goes and see if they can shut down Kyler Murray, if Latavius Murray can be like that Reggie Bush and break their back. Maybe not yeah. the same style, but we'll see how this game goes. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Excited about Saints on Tap, poured by Bud Light, official beer of the NFL. This show is getting bigger every week. we got more views, uh, more engagement, and that's what we're all about. The show for Who Dat Nation. And, Absolutely. Uh, make sure you join us every week and uh, make sure you get in all our promos and stuff. And Who Dat? We'll see you guys next week. Hit me with it. Down with the red bird men people. (laughs) I don't know.